from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now, here's your host, Dave Vellante. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this Cube conversation. This is part of our CIO series, and Jason Thomas is here. He's the CIO of Cole, Scott, and Kassane. CSK is Florida's largest civil defense law firm. Cube alum, Jason Thomas, great to see you again. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. So, let's talk a little bit about uh, the firm. Uh, largest uh, firm in Florida that focuses on civil defense. Uh, so you got lawyers, you got paralegals running around, you got demanding clients. What's the business like that's driving your technology strategy? Um, so, when I, uh, I'm, I'm new to legal, so this I've been here about almost four years now, so I started in January. Um, whole different world, it came from, uh, from startup biotech, that, that line of business, and uh, completely different animal. Um, very, it's, it's some of what you imagine, very always on the go, very busy, a lot of business. Um, we're, we're, we, we open dozens of cases a day, new cases, so um, a lot of things going on. Really event driven. Yeah, <laughs> very, very, very busy. So, um, and you know, technology is, the firm is, is taking the stance that they, we, technology is very important uh, to the firm and uh, we want to use the best technology possible uh, to make us as efficient as possible. That's, that's, that's the chief driver um, for tech in, in, at the law firm. So tech, you know, uh, 15 years ago, whatever, was like taking email to SaaS, right? Yeah. So, but I, I would imagine you're focusing a lot on, on just attorney and employee productivity maybe collaboration, document management, compliance, are, are those sort of hot topics and how are you applying technology to deal with those? Yep, so that is um, big drive efficiency, um, using technology to be efficient and, and to make our folks productive, but we don't want to see, um, and that you see sometimes, you, you throw a whole bunch of technology at folks thinking that it's going to make them efficient and productive and actually um, it could be the greatest technology in the world for one place, and you apply it and you put it in, in another firm, and it makes us unproductive. So that's that's kind of the magic there, kind of trick to figuring out what what it is that's, that actually is going to make us productive. Are there pretty clear swim swim lanes in, in your firm, or is there a lot of shadow IT going on? Because I, I would imagine a lot of the frustration of you know IT folks is you get the shadow IT, they bring in a point product, and then, and then IT because the CIO is called, hey, clean up this crime scene. And uh, do you, is that a problem in your firm specifically, or even your industry, or is it pretty much, hey, let the let the tech folks figure out what the right tool for the job is? Um, so in my mind, the, the the trick here is it's it's not going to be any one person or any practice group that's going to define what what what's the best option, best tech. I mean, thankfully for me, um, I, I do I do try and drive most of the tech at the firm, but. Um, the key is you, you have to understand how the business runs. Just because, again, it's, just because it's cool tech or it's working at one firm, it doesn't mean it's going to apply or work in another. So I spent a lot of time um, in conversations with um, a lot of the partners and uh, associates. I, I try and I make myself available as much, just just to chat, see what they're doing, um, see what could make them more efficient. Sometimes, uh, if you don't ask, they don't even tell you. But if you ask the question, um, you can learn a lot in, in 20 minutes from somebody. And that kind of helps me decide, okay, what, what's going to make sense, or what's the next thing I should be looking at um, to, to help folks out. So basically, Columbo questions, for those of you who remember Columbo, yeah. kind of asking basic questions, what about workflow, how do you spend your time, what kinds of questions would you ask attorneys? Um, honestly, they could be calling about something completely unrelated to what, uh, you know, what, what I'm thinking. It, could, it just could be as simple as, hey, I have this thing with this, this program where I'm trying to do um, X and this is the way we're doing now. Is there a better way to do it? Or it could be simple as um, we just kind of fall into the conversation um, based on other things. You know, they, they just they just want to talk to somebody sometimes, but they're not necessarily going to uh, bring it up or just don't have the time. They don't. They don't have the time. So a lot of times in the cube, you know, we get caught up. We love the tech. We talk about data science and machine learning and blockchains and everything else. But you know, there's this basic blocking and tackling that a CIO has to worry about. I wonder if you could share your perspectives based on your experience, just in terms of 
some of the advice you might give to uh, organizations that are maybe maybe growing, maybe haven't had the experience of, of, a, of a CIO that's been around the block, maybe in different industries, but some of the basic blocking and tackling that, that you see that maybe doesn't happen in organizations that really needs to happen. Uh, the, the expectation, or, or, or when you're when you're thinking about um, and thinking about what what the next thing is for the firm or for your company, um, you, you also want to kind of think long. You want to think long term as well. You want want to think three three to five years out. So if we do this now and based on our based on our current um, growth projections, will this work for us in three years? Will this work for us in five years? Or what's our what's our game plan? Maybe we start small and. Um, expand for there, but you, you don't want to just plan for the immediate. You want to plan for the future. I mean, that's kind of. Uh, I think that's that's what CIO should be doing. It's not just about the tech or was well, it going to work in our environment, but is it going to work for us down the road? Because we don't want n nobody. CFOs don't want to hear, and CIO, uh, CEOs don't want to hear that. Hey, you know, we just bought this thing last year, but uh, yeah, we're going to have to buy something new now because it doesn't work anymore. But it does happen sometimes. It happens right? all the time. I, I mean, I remember. I've done it. You know. Right, I, I remember, uh, this goes, goes a way, ways back now, but the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, I think it was 2006, and everybody was rushing to plug holes because the, the courts ruled that uh, electronic uh, uh, material was you know, evidentiary for whatever, seven years or something. So everybody was like, okay, we need to have a system that allows us to comply. So they went out and bought email archiving systems, mm -hmm. which they knew they were going to have to throw away in three or four years. So, so how do you... Do, how do you deal with it? Do you face that, especially you know, in a in a compliance-oriented world, and and you just try to sort of balance the cost and the throwaway nature of that initiative with something more strategic? How do you deal with that, and how do you communicate that to the to the powers that be? Uh, no one no one likes to be held at gunpoint. At number one, and ex especially my boss. So, <laughs> I mean, he gets it right. I mean, there's the regulations, but I will say. Nothing happens as fast as everyone says it's going to happen. Uh, so there's, there's always that. You know, there's always like this panic. Oh, we got to put this in. And honestly, I feel like tech folks use it as an excuse, and of course I do it too. You know, <laughs> to like, oh, you know, this is awesome. You know, we get to put something new in, and you know, no one's going to say no. And it's not always the best approach. And you, again, you kind of have to look at it long term, holistically for the businesses. You know, what what is really going to happen in, in a few years? Is, is this technology going to even be a thing? In, 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 in a few years, or is it just like, to, just to satisfy an immediate solution? Because again, uh, I don't want to, uh, the last thing I, I hate doing is, is, is putting something in and telling my boss that it has to be replaced. He hates hearing that. Mm. He does not, and I don't, I don't want to tell him that either. It's, it's uh. quite frankly, it's embarrassing. I don't blame your boss, right? Yeah, it's right. embarrassing, you know, it's just, let's do it right the first time. How do you do planning? I mean, obviously there's a technology component of, uh, Planning, but I, I'm inferring from what you said that you know, technology is kind of the, the the last thing you should be worrying about. You should be worried about you know the direction of the firm, the business, the growth plan. H how do you do as CIO planning, and how do you align that with the business? Uh, conversations. So um, lots lots of conversations. Lots of conversations with the attorneys. Um, continuous conversations uh, with with my boss. Um, the CEO, um, and and sometimes I'm not I'm I'm not really great about it sometimes, and you know, weeks will go by, you know, and and I won't even have a conversation with him about what's going on. And he wants to know what's going on. He doesn't understand all of it, but in those you know 15, 20 minute conversations, um, you'll be surprised what you'll learn and what what's going on in the business that you didn't or I didn't know about, um, and from there I can can make decisions about you know, six months from now or next year or during budgeting season, what, what it is that we need. Because budgeting season is not really the time to try and figure out what it is you want to do for next year. You, you want to have a plan months before that. You know, you, you want to, you already want to have an, kind of an idea what you want to do. I mean, I've been, I've been talking to my CFO since the beginning of summer about things we, we want to do for 2020. Uh, you know, six months, nine months um, ahead of time, so. so do you do basically annual planning? Do you try to look out further? Do you do you formally document that stuff? Huh? Every quarter, so we have we kind of have um, uh, most of the conversations with our or with our with my CFO and COO. Um, every quarter, we have a kind of a, a list of, of, of projects slash um, what is it we want to do for the next couple quarters, and we just kind of track that and based on uh, what we're seeing and how we do, then we, we basically plan each quarter mm -hmm. is how it comes down to. 
and we have a, we'll call it a whiteboard, a virtual whiteboard of what we're doing and what we want to do. But relatively near to midterm mm -hmm. planning, you're not doing like five year planning, no, is that right? No. Is it a waste of time to try, try to do that? Or? At least in your business, maybe in pharmaceutical. Or at least for us, it was really it's it's hard. It was hard for us uh, to do that because because of how quickly we grew over the last. Um, again, I've only been here almost four years, but even when I started um, in uh, 2015, um, I think we had somewhere around uh, 300 plus attorneys. Now we're somewhere in the 475 range. Um, I'm not saying no one saw that happening, but I don't think we, you know, I don't think we expect that. I mean, business has been great, and we're we're happy, and we're uh, fortunate to have it. But um, you can only plan so much. Uh, but you, you do you but do the best you can with the data you have. And so. your organizational structure, you report to the CFO. Is that correct? CEO. Uh, CEO. CEO. Yeah. Okay. So the so so and so your peer essentially of the CFO. Is that right? So you yeah. when you say you talk to the CFO about. Budgeting, so you've yeah. got the CEOs. More of the nitty gritty, you know, the details, the you know, details and the numbers. So. Well, what's that conversation like? Is it obviously you got to justify it, show a business case, or is it more sort of? Hey, so here's the good sense. news. Got lucky again. Um, the CFO is very uh, technology forward, and so he understands that it it drives a lot of efficiencies within the firm. So he you know he gets it, uh, but he's been in the industry long enough to get it and, and knows that we can. Again, I uh, use efficiency a lot, but there's just a lot of efficiencies um, and a lot of inefficiencies that is inefficiencies you see in, 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 in a lot of what folks do in law firms that no one takes the time to sit down and say, okay, why do you do it like this? Um, there's gotta be a better way. Well, well, this is the way I just do it. And so uh, we've been able to kind of adjust a lot of those workflows or change those workflows to um, uh, to make it more cost effective for the business, like even, even things simple as um, um, just manage print services. You know, with DOA, do we store 100 toners in the back somewhere and then wait for someone to uh, uh, say that they're out of toner? It's not very efficient uh, and it's very expensive actually. So, uh, you know, we, we put in a man, you know, much more efficient process in place for toners because we're a paperless firm, but you know, I mean, we still have to print. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, well, so the joke about the paperless office before the paperless <laughs> bathroom. Um, yeah. So, or the other way around. I, I want to ask you about security. Are you the de facto chief information security officer, or do you have a C CISO? Or? Do not have a CISO, that'll yes. be me. So that is you. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's talk security. So what is the state of security and, and as you see it, um, it's constantly evolving. Security practitioners tell us that they've got so many tools. They got, they might have a SecOps team. You may or may not. That it may be sort of embedded in your team. But they've got to respond. They've got to respond. Sometimes it's hard to figure out what they should respond to. Prioritization, the data, keeping up with the bad guys, all that stuff. What's your state of security? Um, so I think these days um, it's not really. It's not really about having the best firewall or, or the best uh, outside protections. I think a lot of the attacks that are, that are happening now, not that they don't happen from the outside, but a lot of it is, is a lot of social engineering and uh, a lot of every, everything's ha everything, they're taking advantage of the, uh, the ignorance of the users, for, for lack of a better way to say it. And so, a lot of it's coming in through email, malicious links, and they're 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 taking advantage of of uh, of the inside and and bad practices and uh, bad policies and or lack of. So I, I think, based on what what we see in the news now and uh, what you read about, and it seems like there's there's a breach every week somewhere, mm -hmm. and 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 then when it comes down to it, you find out that um, X company didn't uh, didn't didn't use a strong hashing for, for or, or salting um, on the hashes for their for the passwords like simple simple like just basic basic stuff it's not like uh, some massive operation like you see in a movie where you know they're they're you know making this big plan to break in the building all the plans out and they're sneaking in you know from the ceiling and all that kind of stuff getting in they're just just base, basic stuff they're just um, passwords ha ha hacking passwords reused passwords there's databases of passwords everywhere um, out, in the, out in the dark web that you can just buy, and they're just 
just utilizing simple stuff like that. It's, it's not even complicated anymore. It's just it's a lot of social engineering. Uh, oftentimes, I say that uh, bad user behavior trumps good security every time. Um, I want to ask you about so the state of, this, of security in the industry. So you were at Reinforce, we were, we were there, and Steven Sch Schmidt stood up and he said, look at this narrative from the vendor community that says security is broken isn't productive. It hurts the industry. At the same time, I was at VMworld recently, a couple months ago, last month actually, Pat Gelsinger basically stood up and said security's broken. We, you know, we're here to fix it. They bought, you know, made a big acquisition of Carbon Black, a local company. So you have these two different you know, polarizing opinions. Um, I don't necessarily feel like the state of security is is great. I look back every year, I said, do I feel more secure or not? You know, remember Art Coviello every year, RSA would write his letter. Um, but what are your thoughts on that? You're basically saying, hey, it's, it's, it's a lot of times it's user behavior, it's things that maybe, you know, it's education. Is security a do-over, I guess is my question? A do-over in the sense that, it, I think it just comes down to basic education. Um, I have, you'd be surprised, we're, we're in tech and we're, we understand security and we have all these grand ideas and technologies and vendors and software that we use to, uh, to do different things and all these fancy dashboards, but um, if you ask the basic person off the street about, well, I, think it's like, I think I saw a skit um, on Twitter the other day and you know, there's this guy going around asking them, asking people, you know, what's your Facebook password or you know, how complex is it? And they just give them their passwords and stuff, you know what I mean? It's just like, there's just a lack of, of, of basic education, so all us security buffs walk around um, and they don't understand what we're talking about, but they don't need to understand what we're talking about. We just need to be able to just have a basic security awareness and training with folks. Um, I, have a, I have a friend who works in, in uh, industry um, or in a, a nonprofit that does, um, that helps folks who've been, um, you know, kind of harassed, abused online, and, and she's, she's, saying, she's telling me, she's like, look, you guys are great, you, you're really smart, but um, these folks, um, they don't know the basic stuff, like, hey, um, you know, I keep, someone keeps, you know, logging into my internet, and I keep seeing um, someone, you know, these weird things in my yard, like cameras in my yard, and can I do this with my phone, and oh, do I, I can't use, you know, like my dog's name for my Facebook password, like, this is basic stuff that nobody knows. It's right. not because they're stupid, it's just, they just don't know. And so like we're up here and your average everyday person is you know, just, just on this level. Mm. How about ransomware? I mean, obviously a hot topic in, in the business. Um, what should people be, what should they know? <clears throat> what should they be doing? Um, at a basic level, security awareness training. Um, it's very simple to do. There's a lot of, not that I'm pushing products, there's plenty of products out there, security, great ones that kind of help you use or, uh, or teach them what not to do or what to look for. Um, we, we, we run a phishing campaign at our firm every once in a while, and at, at this point, no one clicks on anything without asking. I mean, they, I, I get direct emails now, say, hey, how does this look? Does it look like I should click it? Or, you know, does it look legit? I mean, it's great. Yeah. They ask now, they, they know not to do it. Whereas, I mean, that's, that's how they get you. That's how they get most of these places, especially from, um, we get a lot of, we, get, we, we constantly hear about, um, smaller firms or smaller clients and companies getting hacked. We'll constantly get emails from them all the time. They'll get hacked and then we'll get the, uh, you know, we'll get the emails with the links or whatever. Um, that's one um, on the user side. On the IT side, I think we just really need to take it back to the basics. I mean, let's make sure we have um, backups and a backup policy and uh, a data protection policy and an incident response plan. You know, let's, let's have a plan here and let's not um, react when something happens, let's just have a plan. Um, honestly, at our firm, um, we do have backups and we have, we, we have layer, layer strategy, um, but there's just some basic things that we don't do, like, no, uh, IT folks, we don't, we don't keep things on our desktop. Let's start with us, you know, we're, we're supposed to be the leadership uh, in, in this regard, so let's not keep stuff on our desk, keep stuff on the network, let's keep it protected. Make sure it's, it's part of the backup schedule. Uh, things like that. I think you need to start there because I was, um, you know, I was just reading about, uh, there's an article that came out yesterday, um, I think it was Washington Post, um, and uh, it was talking about the ransomware incident in Baltimore a few months ago. Uh, they're just now finding out that the, even the IT folks had stuff on their local computers that couldn't be recovered. Um, important documentation. So, I mean, this is just data protection 101. Mm. You know, we got to 
take it back to the basics. Take it back. All right. Last question is just kind of your career. So you mentioned before you were in, uh, I think you said healthcare. Or, or yeah, so I worked for a MSP, so I worked with a lot of startups. So how'd you get here? How'd you become a CIO? People out there, maybe young people in, 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 in tech, they aspire perhaps to stay in tech, but they want maybe more of a management role. What was your path and what kind of advice would you give them? Um, I, what I would say is, so it worked out where um, I, was, I, was, um, I, was, I was a lead at the uh, company I was out here in Mass at the time. Um, and so, long story short, my wife had an opportunity um, in, in Orlando. We moved and I said I would never work for a law firm, ever, um, because I was, when my current boss found out I was coming, we have a, uh, we have a long relationship. And when I, when I was, in, we grew up in Florida. And uh, so part of that, yeah, okay, so I was in the right place at the right time, and I, and I knew somebody. Um, that's why it's important to stay on top of networking. Always be networking, not for any other reason, just get to know people, you know? Um, the tough thing that I had growing, uh, kind of growing in the industry, no, I, I didn't get involved early on, which I should have. Um, I should have gone to events. You know, and things like that, and get to, get to know folks. Because if the people don't know you, why are they? You know, why are they going to hire you? It's easier to get in somewhere or get an opportunity if they at least know you or know your name or know somebody who knows you. That's that's number one. So I'm big on that. Um, as soon as I moved back here, I, I've I've already started. Um, I have quarterly lunches with some of the CIOs at different firms here. I just put myself out there. Say, hey, I'm here. You want to get together for lunch? So that's it. That's it. That simple. Um, number two, make sure you. This is what you want to do. It's uh, a lot of it, and, and you hear this all the time, it's true, it's a lot of it has to do with personalities and people. You are managing personalities and people half the time. You're not just doing the tech. If you think you're just gonna be doing tech or you know, doing cool stuff, not the case. <laughs> so make sure you can, you know, make sure you know what you're getting into because it's, it's, it's very challenging. Yeah, it's great, great advice. So it, network, it's, it's not, I like to say, it's not who you know, it's who knows you. So get out there and then love it. Because uh, a lot of times, it's, I would imagine it's thankless, right? You hear, yep. you hear a lot of the chatter when something goes wrong. It's but, like the it's like a defense of a football team, you know. Yeah. It's fine until until somebody scores on you. Yeah, know, right? someone get gets sacked. You know what I mean? So <laughs> otherwise, no one cares. <laughs> All right. All right, Jason. Well, thanks for the update. Really appreciate you coming on the cube again. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. All right, keep it right there, buddy. We will be back with our next segment right after this short break.